All Abrahamic religions believe in unity, Tawheed. And all of a sudden there is Trinity that is full of logical fallacies? If you can prove it, I will convert. Uh, there are so many mistakes in this little thing. Uh, Sam, if you go back, if you go back to early Judaism, yes. did they believe in what Muslims believe about Tawheed? Absolutely not. In fact, the standard work that's used by scholars, and it's written in a way you can even understand it very simply, is by the late Jewish, and he was Jewish, mm -hmm. he wasn't a Christian, Alan F. Siegel, Two Powers in Heaven. He documents from Jewish writings before the time of Christ, during the time of Christ, and even admits this was a belief held by many Jews up until at least the second century. The Jews knew from the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible, there was, uh, there was at least a second divine power along with Yahweh, Yehovah, sometimes called the angel of Jehovah, sometimes the son of man. Now, to give you actual documentation of this, the book of Enoch, the book of Enoch mentions the son of man, which is the motif of Daniel. It's taken from Daniel 7, 13 and 14. And in the book of Enoch, folks, don't take my word for it. You got liberal critical scholars that Bart Ehrman. Oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot about him. In his book, How Jesus Became God, he has a section, folks, he has a section where he's parroting the arguments of Siegel and others, where he shows that in the Judaism before the time of Christ, and he quotes these sources, they believed in a pre-existent divine Messiah, and he quotes Enoch, where he says that according to Enoch, the Son of Man, who is said to be the Messiah, and said to be the elect one, the chosen one, exist before creation Boom. and he's hidden with God and then will appear in the latter days and he'll sit on a throne of glory and all the kings of the earth will have to worship him this is a Jewish source folks and this is a commentary on the son of man found in Daniel 7 13 and 14 another Jewish source for Ezra and this is something acknowledged by a liberal scholar named John J. Collins. And he says that for Ezra, there you have a divine pre-existent Messiah who will appear in the latter days, who actually dies, but will be resurrected for Ezra. This is not a Christian document. And then we can go into the Dead Sea Scrolls and look at what's known as 11Q Melchizedek Scroll, a scroll found in Cave 11 of the Qumran community, where Melchizedek is depicted as the God of Psalm 82, where texts about Jehovah are applied to him, and he's said to be the God in the heavenly council, who, on behalf of Jehovah, destroys the other gods, <clears throat> Melchi Resha, I believe, the Belial, the evil spirit being, and his, and his <clears throat> angels, destroys them and makes atonement for the people of God. These are all Jewish sources. I didn't even quote the Old Testament. I don't, I don't need these sources. I can go to the Old Testament and show you the Trinity in the Old Testament, right? But I'm giving you sources written by Jews who are not influenced by the New Testament. There was no New Testament. Who just reading their Old Testament could see there's more than one divine person in heaven. Um, now we have uh, Behold the Son here says, Why isn't there a single chapter in either the Old or New Testament that explains the Trinity in detail? Why do we need this mental gymnastics for something that should be so clear? It's clear to me. It's clear to you. It's clear to millions of people. It's been clear to millions of Christians throughout the centuries that the Old and New Testament, what they do say about the Godhead, is so clear and explicit. In fact, the church was forced because of the clarity of Scripture to formulate the doctrine of the Trinity because they knew no other doctrine right, would fit what the Bible teaches as a whole concerning the Godhead. Mm -hmm. So when you say, why isn't it clear? Clear to who? It's clear yeah. to us, maybe not to you, yeah. but that can be turned against them. But go ahead, David. Why is it, why is it not clear? I've never studied it, but why, why is it not clear to me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's begging, the, that's yeah. like I said, that's assuming. To you it's not clear because you don't want to see it, even the way you ask the question. Mm -hmm. But someone who just comes to Scripture, guys, here, and you too, be the Son, I challenge you, I dare you, have the courage to do this. Pray and say, God, if you're real, and I believe you are, I want, I want to now come to the Bible without any presuppositions, without any traditions that tell me what you can and cannot be. I'll accept you as you are. I, I make a promise to you, God. 
if you can show me who you are in the Bible, if you're a trinity and Jesus is the God-man, I'll accept it. I won't put any limitations on what you can and cannot be, and I guarantee you, you'll be worshiping the trinity with us in a matter of time. If you ask sincerely and honestly, because Jesus says, Jehovah says, you will seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. No conditions. All your heart, open. And that's just to the Muslims, open, <clears throat> honest. God, whoever you are, I won't put you in a box. I won't tell you what you can and cannot be. I'll accept you as you are. Please make yourself known. And I promise you, <clears throat> the Trinity will reveal himself to you, the triune God of Father, Son, and Spirit, and you'll be worshiping the Trinity with us. Imagine saying, Without ever reading a, without ever be, being, you know, without ever taking a, a physics class or anything like that, saying, well, I mean, if if quantum mechanics is right, why, well, why, why does it sound so complicated? You can't just say it in one little, you know, one little line that makes it easy to understand, huh? Why's it got to be so? <laughs> Guys, yeah. some topics are, some topics take time to to get your minds around, and and even you know something again, you're talking about quantum mechanics or Einstein's theory of relativity or, to, or particle yeah. physics, things like that. You have to spend years of your life, many decades of your life, to really grasp these things, and that's the level of creation. And you got people coming up. Well, I mean, why can't God be in this neat little box that I could just, you know, oh, bam, it's exactly. right there. Oh, I got it. Well, that if, guys, if anyone comes up to you with a God and says, "Here, I got this super easy to understand God," that's an idol. Perfect. That is an idol. Reject that paganism. Boom.